<laughs> well, my name is Sophie. I'm from Sweden and I'm here as a freestyle skater. So a typical work day. You wake up, you sit on the coffee machine first thing for sure. Morning. And here we actually, we go by bus transportation to a separate venue because we need the ice, right? So we come here, we warm up. Usually we do choreography on, on the ice. Ha, ha, round, hip, 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 and pound, pound, pound. But we also have a lot of other elements in this show. We are learning stick manipulation, we have acting classes, truly incorporating a lot more elements than just normal figure skating in this. And as freestyle skater, we also take the time to do a lot of acrobatics off the ice before we go onto the ice. After work, you sleep. <laughs> no, it's very, like with, for all athletes, I like it's very important to always cool down, stretch, foot bath, <laughs> those type of things. I would say that's definitely a process that comes with how comfortable you get in the show. For me, I can almost get like an outside of body experience where I just see everything from, from outside of me. And when you step off, you barely remember what you just did. <laughs> As you get more comfortable, that's when like the beauty with this kicks in, when you can actually like start um, getting a connection with the audience and you get very secure in your role and you can start putting more emotions and acting and, and the face expression and all of this into it. Uh, and that's when it all becomes so much fun. In our act, I think what's most impressive is the variosity of skaters, since freestyle skating has so many different elements and different styles within it that we're all very, very different. We all have our own approach to it, which makes the number very intense and very, very trick-based. To apply for a Cirque du Soleil job, uh, you need to show everything you've done. For me, it was my gymnastic background, all my dancing, skating, theater, like literally every little thing you have in your box, you just need to, to show it out there. I have a background in gymnastics. I was doing gymnastics when I was a little kid, up until I was 13 years old. And then I transferred into figure skating. Uh, my favorite element in gymnastics was the floor, because that's when you got to be a little bit more creative and you got to pick your music. So I guess that's kind of dragged me into the figure skating side of it. And I competed in figure skating for five years. And then I got dragged into the show business for the same reason. I love the creativity of it and to be performing on stage. After I stopped competing, I traveled the world with the cruise ships and I performed in the ice shows on board some of the biggest cruise ships in the world. I believe the combination from my background with an acrobatic background and the skating, it's a very good fit for me and I'm very happy to be here. I would say the most challenging so far is patience, for sure. It's a, Creation takes a lot of patience, which is also the beauty of it. Everything is created on the spot. You get to be a part of how everything comes together, all the different elements with both choreography and music and lights and everything. It's time to set some lights. Anyway, which is truly like an amazing experience, but it takes a lot of patience. It's a lot of puzzle pieces to put together. Um, and then to just constantly stay warm, stay in shape. So coming here as a Cirque du Soleil artist, um, I don't think we can point out enough how well taken care of we are. We have a PMED who looks after us. We have a lot of resources around and a lot of equipment to help us stay in shape and to be very, very safe. And also the, how friendly everyone is and how well we all work together. I think it's important to find your own uniqueness. For me, example, that's when I started moving my gymnastics over to the ice, finding something that not a lot of other people are doing, and also really think about the love you have for performance, because that's what we all are based on, our love for performing. If I would describe our show Axel in three words, I would use futuristic, intense, 
and if you're able to read between the lines, you can find a lot of hidden messages to relate to. So my name is Silvia Lopazo. I'm coming from Spain. I'm a realist in the show. I wake up in the morning. I like to sleep a lot. It is Sunday and it's pretty late. It is uh, 12.48 right now. It's time to go to sleep, but before I need to check my schedule to make sure that I uh, set the right alarm. So as you can see, here I start at uh, 10 o'clock which gives me time to sleep that I really like and so I'm gonna set the alarm and uh, go to sleep right now. So I wake up at 8.15, the bus uh, leaves at 8.30. Good morning, it's uh, just three minutes left till uh, the bus leaves so I have to rush. I rush myself, run into the bus, sleep a little bit, I got my coffee, my breakfast and then I warm up for my first discipline which normally is chains, then uh, bungees, then we change sometimes, sometimes it's aerial ladder, sometimes it's stick manipulation. We get uh, some lunch, coffee again, and then uh, sometimes I work in tissue. Sometimes we do acting class at the end, at the very end. When I arrive to the residence uh, where I live at the moment, I normally have a dinner, this is the first thing I do. And then depends on the day, some, some days I, we are really tired, so I just put some uh, series in TV shows in Netflix or sometimes we just do some uh, board games all together at the lobby. So today is Monday and uh, we just finished a really hard task. Incredible. <laughs> a 1,000 pieces puzzle. So my first thing of being part of Axel family is that I'm literally learning new skills. Um, I was a rope and tissue artist and now I'm skating, I am doing chains, bungees and all that are things and disciplines that I've never done before. So today I'm gonna do my first uh, makeup session and uh, here I have everything ready. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> So in my childhood, I was a gymnast. I was doing rhythmic gymnastics. I started at seven years old and I stopped when I was 21. After that, I started working as a physiotherapist. I thought I was going to give up to the uh, professional sports, but actually I couldn't give it, I couldn't give up. And I was treating people that were acrobats and I was going, I, I wanted to know more about them. And then I realized that I actually wanted to become an acrobat and I didn't want to be a physio for now. So I decided to start training aerials and I got my first job a few months later. Before joining I Axel, I was working in Cirque du Soleil at sea. Uh, so it means I was working on a ship on, on top of the water and now kind of I'm doing the same thing but uh, it is ice, it's not water anymore. It is water but it's, so, it's solid, whatever. <laughs> because I'm doing few acts in this show, every time I have to warm up differently. Uh, for bungees I need to work on my core mainly, uh, for silks I warm up my flexibility and for chain it's kind of everything. I need to be strong but also flexible and overall I need to have a really good grip. I think for me the most uh, challenging is to be on the ice. Skating is the hard thing and it's uh, a completely different language. I all normally use my arms and my, my core and now I have to use a lot my my legs, my knees in general, yes, that's hard. So we are now in the quick change area, just next to the ice. So we are ready to go. I have my crampons on. I have actually new shoes uh, with a spike that uh, keep me stable on the ice. So let's try them. When I get on the ice, the first thing I, I think is uh, focus, don't fall, don't break anything. You need your arms to do your job. That's all what I think. <laughs> I really like the adrenaline that I get every day before going on my discipline because mainly I do aerials and every time I feel this adrenaline I feel that I'm safe. It's enough to be safe and not too much to be out of control. <laughs> the 
the advice I would give to anyone who wants to be part of Cirque du Soleil is um, find what makes you special. That's something very important and Cirque du Soleil look for very special people. Never give up, even if you go to the audition and you don't pass, you don't go through, don't give up, just keep working, you can definitely get in later on. I would describe Axel badass, game and concert. My name is Nicolas Montesioca. I am from Mexico and I am a, the hand balancer at the Cirque du Soleil new show Axel. I wake up, I try to make a little breakfast and uh, get ready to take the bus. Good morning. <laughs> we take the bus, we arrive here. It all depends. Sometimes we are going directly into creation of the act. Sometimes we are working in uh, different cues that we have to do during the show. Just going to my spinning table um, for a little bit of training. Come with me. <laughs> Usually the material of the table is it's very slippery, so I use resin to make it sticky. I guess after putting my hands many times in the same place, it becomes like a you know like a little thin resin uh, layer, which is also good because it helps me to see exactly where I want to put my hands, like when I'm performing. So as you can see, it's like it has the size like exactly in one side, one side, and that's it, I guess. And uh, I don't clean it so much because I feel like it, the more Pressing a half, the more sticky it comes, so I don't slip out and fall. <laughs> uh, after that, we have a lunch. Also, they are preparing us for doing. Uh, I, I never skated before, so they are giving us uh, classes for the skating. Then, after we finish the day, also with a different maybe cues or doing different uh, preparations for the show. Then we take the bus back. We have dinner, and most of my evenings are either going for a bike ride or try to find a nice place to eat and uh, try to get to bed early because like, the days are long and we want to make sure that we rest our bodies and we're ready for, for the whole process. Last thing I'm doing before the bed, uh, I try to send a message to my son. Yeah, like I try to call him just before I go to bed. Uh, he is now at the moment in Portugal, so the time difference is kind of complicated, so I send him a voice message. Like I try to remember this every day. And then, uh, yeah, turn on my phone and then go to bed. I have a very beautiful childhood. I was um, raised in the south of Mexico in a very small town in Coltepoztlan with a lot of rivers and waterfalls. And um, I grew up with my twin brother, uh, my older brother and my mother. When I was a kid dreaming about uh, becoming a circus performer was not one of the, the dreams I had. I actually started doing circus when I was uh, 23. So I wasn't even thinking to do circus when I was a kid. But I had a lot of dreams. I was thinking to maybe become a a yoga guru <laughs> or maybe uh, become a pilot. The way I became a circus artist was uh, a little bit more like accident. I met a guy once when I, I think I was about 19 uh, in the street. He was doing a circus, uh, like a, a street show in Mexico near where I live. And I was very interested and by destiny we ended up becoming good friends. We lived together afterwards and he started teaching me. Uh, at a very young age, I think when I was 20 years old, uh, I became a father. So I had to make a big decision what I wanted to do with my life and what I wanted to do for my son. So I decided randomly to, um, to become a professional circus artist. So when I was uh, 23, I traveled to China to do a circus school there. I ended up being lucky enough to find one of the best handstand coaches there is in China and in Shanghai. And I ended up staying there for about five years. Oh, yes. <laughs> Okay, good, very good. Okay, good. After that, the destiny took me and I started working for the Seven Fingers, the company I was just working before and doing uh, circus festivals and creating more circus things, and now here we are. Aquí estoy con mi cuate el Ernesto, la banda mexicana de Axel. Ya casi, mm -hmm. ya casi ya para la primera que Quebec. How I got into the circus, they actually contacted me. Uh, she sent me a message on Facebook. <laughs> Facebook is amazing for that. And they contacted me and asked me, like, do you want to be part of this new project? Do you have free on these days to these days? And uh, luckily I was, and I was very interested to become part of this project. For the act that we're doing now, 
I warm up my shoulders, which are more important for handstand, shoulder, wrist and elbows. I warm up my shoulders, I make sure that my legs and my core is completely warm. I do my handstand uh, basics to be, make sure that Sylvia, which is my artistic director, uh, has the best input to go forward with the creation of the act. I love uh, the music. I think um, Cirque du Soleil and Axel, the whole team of Axel, did a very good decision with the music. I think the music of the show is amazing and I am very in love with the music for the act and it helped me a lot because I get very inspired for what we're going to do for the act. I think uh, one of the themes of the music is one of the styles of music that I really love, which is perfect for me. And uh, I've been talking a lot of the cast uh, members and they also think the music is just incredible. Something I didn't expect from, the, from coming to work with Cirque du Soleil was a lot of the, the surprises and, and the efficiency. Like we, we have a very beautiful team collaborating with creation of our act, the, with the cues, uh, the technicians, the creative department, the costume, the music. Everything is like so well put together as the Cirque du Soleil has so much experience with uh, the shows before. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And that was a little bit of a wow, like especially the way things are organized to be able to to deliver this baby in a due date. That impressed me a lot. That was very like um, surprising and at the same time satisfying just to be part of this at the moment. Cirque du Soleil is a company that is uh, looking for different acts and different new age uh, circus performers. And I think the, uh, one of the best advice I could give is just to, to be different. To be different and try to push it, your, your career or your artist uh, feeling towards that way. I would say Axel is very sweet, love, and a lot of excitement. <laughs> My name is Abadi. I come from United Arab Emirates um, on Axel as a freestyle. I wake up, I take a shower, prepare my stuff, take the shuttle, come here. It depends, our schedule is different from day to day. We have a lot going on. We have ice training, dry training. Acting classes, martial arts. A lot of. Stuff. So sometimes we start early, sometimes we start late, and yeah, but most of it now is ice. So, Sophie, what are you gonna eat? Everything! Everything? You're gonna take them all? When I get home, I breathe in, I go to the jacuzzi, sauna, relax, and sleep. For my act, I need to be warm from toe to head because it's a lot of flips, a lot of fast movements and controlled movement. Yes, yes. So you don't want to crack something middle of your act. I start with jumping ropes, uh, stretching, doing the basic flips and like go through it to, to have it there when I need it. When I was 19, I left the Emirates to Germany to start my uh, study. I studied aerospace engineering for two semesters. Then ice skating was like my side hobby. I just kept going in this sport and reached a good level in it. And I had this opportunity with Cirque, so I had a difficult decision to continue my university or take a leap of faith and come to Cirque. And here am I. One day I was in my acrobatic training. I took the train and in the way I get a direct message on Instagram. We looked to your profile and we found it interesting. Are you interested to sign a contract with Cirque du Soleil for two years? And I was like, is it a scam? <laughs> I doubted it first, like I didn't believe it. I thought it's kind of scam. And after a couple of calls, 
email, I end up signing a contract with Cirque du Soleil. At the beginning, how I start skating, ice was for me the relief that I have when I finish my stressful day in the university or when I have a gap or it's in the weekend. To go on ice is just to forget the world and fly. It, this is the feeling I got when I'm skating. I don't think about anything else. The dance, the moves, the gliding, the, the cold. This is all what I feel. The most challenging part, to have a ton of patience. It's always challenging out of your comfort zone, so you need to deal with this with patience. This is like your best friend. You need to be open for new things and just accept the challenge and take it as a man. Three. <laughs> My favorite part, we are a group, but we still special as individual. We are strong as separated and strong as a group as well. This is something interesting to think about. If it's applicable in real life, that's going to be awesome. Okay, and one, two, two three, four, Rangers! Let's go! I would give the same advice I get from my dance coach, Ms. Stefanina. If you want something and you see it in the front of you, keep going. Because as soon as you start reaching it, it's, sometimes it go further. So don't let anything kill your motivation. Just keep following it. And trust me, from when I'm here, I, I had a lot. I've been through a lot and here I am. How I describe Axel in three words? Crazy, ambitious, and breathtaking. See you on Axel. Je m'appelle Alex Pernature. Je viens de la ville de Rimouski au Québec. Puis dans le spectacle, je suis le jongleur diaboliste et euh, quoi. Un déjeuner quand même euh, important. Après ça, un peu de fusio, un café, café. Après ça, euh, jongler. Un peu les épaules, un peu le cou. En jonglerie, souvent comme ça. Donc, le cou, c'est important. Puis de ne pas faire tout, juste de la grosse technique de comme faire des gros tricks. Juste un peu pour te réchauffer, te mettre en confiance. Après, tu fais ta journée. Là, ici, on fait du patin, donc de, de, de patiner aussi un peu le matin, c'est important, c'est cool. Puis sinon, après ça, training, training, training. On mange. Training, training, training. Et après ça, on finit la journée et puis le soir, euh, un peu de stretching, même si euh, en jonglerie, euh, on n'est pas très, très flexible. Mais en tant que jongleur, il faut jongler. Hein, jongler si tu ne jongles pas pendant 3-4 jours, tu, tu, perds ce que, tu perds le niveau que tu as. T'sais, t'sais, ça va tout le temps descendre un peu. C'est important tout le temps de garder le niveau et de jongler. Fait que durant ma journée, je jongle. Mon enfance, j'ai fait beaucoup de sport. Je jonglais pas. C'était vraiment sport, 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 sport. Puis euh, c'est au secondaire que j'ai commencé vraiment à, à jongler un peu plus, tout en continuant mes études en, en génie. Puis euh, à un certain moment, j'ai lâché le génie puis je me suis concentré vraiment sur euh, le cirque. En 2013, j'ai fait les auditions pour l'École de cirque de Québec. J'ai fait la formation professionnelle de 2013 à 2016. J'ai gradué en Diabolo. Après ça, j'ai travaillé pour quelques compagnies euh, du Québec, quelques compagnies, quelques compagnies aussi à l'extérieur euh, du Québec et du Canada pendant trois ans. Puis maintenant, je suis ici. Je pense que c'est ma personnalité qui parle beaucoup. Je suis vraiment showman, euh, jeune au public beaucoup, ce qu'ils voulaient. Puis euh, je connaissais Fernand et Sonia de projet euh, antérieur. Donc, euh, j'ai moi lâché un coup de fil. J'ai dit, go! <rire> Salut tout le monde. Donc, euh, cinq minutes avant le show, Sylvia. C'est ça. T'es prête? Moi, je suis prête. Et toi? Comme toujours. We roll with the flow. Le stage, c'est mon élément. Donc, euh, l'important, c'est que je me fasse du fun. Je le transmets aux gens de la meilleure manière que je peux. Et je vais me sentir en confiance de donner un bon show, de livrer un bon spectacle. 
Puis maintenant, c'est juste d'avoir du fun. Exemple, je fais une figure, les, les gens aiment ou aiment pas, mais moi, je peux faire genre « OK », comme je peux, je peux ordonner à eux. Donc, sentir le, le contact avec le public, j'aime vraiment ça. C'est ça qui vient me chercher. C'est une des raisons pourquoi j'aime faire de la scène. Toutes les figures de Diabolo, toutes les tricks que je fais sur, sur glace, c'est nouveau. Moi, je faisais ça sur patin roulette avant. Donc, euh, souvent, les gens disent « Ah, les, les patins, c'est les patins. » Mais patin à glace, patin à roulette, c'est pas pareil. Fait que ça a été euh, un beau défi de convertir les deux. Il y a plein de petites nuances qui fait que quand tu les mets toutes ensemble, ça, ça fait beaucoup. Mais je pense que ouais, le beau défi, c'était ça. Puis le deuxième, c'est... Euh, je sais que pour les patineurs, la glace est tout petite, exemple. Mais pour moi, hein, c'est gros. Puis ils font encore « OK, euh, et ça, c'est ta scène, ça. »« OK. » C'est gros, tu sais. De couvrir toute la glace, tout seul ou presque, ça a été un bon challenge. Ben, J'ai beaucoup de liberté dans mon numéro, ça je suis vraiment content. Le personnage que je fais me, me ressemble beaucoup. Je fais juste aller sur scène puis je m'amuse. Si j'avais un conseil à dire à un artiste ou à un futur artiste qui voudrait travailler pour le cirque, premièrement de rester soi-même, de croire en ce que tu fais et d'être patient. Si tu travailles bien, si tu crois en ce que tu fais, tu as une belle rigueur d'entraînement, tu manges bien si ça, il faut pas s'inquiéter. Ça va venir, il faut juste être patient. Trois mots que j'utiliserais pour décrire le show. Entertaining, impressionnant, c'est sûr. Famille. T'sais, moi, je suis, je suis enfant unique, je vis avec des, des frères, des sœurs, j'ai jamais vécu ça. Puis là, de vivre avec une grosse famille de 40 artistes, puis c'est tech, j'aime bien. <rires> My name is Joe Johnson. Uh, my role in the show is an ice dancer. My name is Karina Mata. Joe and I skated together. This is our sixth year skating together, so quite a while. So every day is a little bit different at CERT. Uh, a lot of days will start around noon. So I wake up about 10. So I just woke up. I'm so in bed. And I'll get a little bit of a workout in. Um, and then we'll take the bus. If you're one minute late for the bus, it leaves without you. It will absolutely <laughs> abandon you. And you'll have to, like, like, people just like run to catch it, yeah. and they it's still really... won't stop. And we do most of our training here. And then uh, that go like ranges from Karina being in a harness and me like holding on to her and going up with her. <laughs> me holding on to the feet of one of these people, bungeeing and like slingshotting them. We'll have makeup practices, other types of workouts. Um, it's a little bit different of a schedule every day. We're here in the gym getting our cycle on. I used to be a cycle instructor before I joined CERN. And look what we've got going on in the background. Nika on spinning table. It's Insane. Been months, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, he's wild. You can't see, but like there's a there's a, a shirtless dude bouncing around with figure skates on a bungee cord right now and I can't, like I'm just making eye contact is really hard because like you're in the middle of a workout and you just, you just stop because like that's happening and it's amazing. It's just super fun because every day you do something new and different that you've never done before that ultimately you're going to be doing on a stage in makeup and it's just crazy. go home around 10 30 or 11 and start it all over again. I started skating when I was eight because I was watching the Olympics and uh, I was like we I had just like flipped to the channel and there were these people standing in the middle of the ice they'd already finished but they were getting toys thrown at them and I was like I want toys thrown at me like I want to do that sport and so that's like why I started figure skating. When I was a kid for a long time I dreamed of becoming a ballerina, but I also went through a phase where I told everyone I was going to be a professional ice cream taster, so maybe that's still in the cards. <laughs> 
So I was on Team USA with my partner Karina and we competed internationally in ice dance for I think four years together. When my partner and I retired for competition, getting into Cirque du Soleil all happened really fast for us. Um, we competed at nationals in January and then we were deciding if we were going to keep competing or what we were going to do and we heard from Cirque that they were creating this new show and so around March or April we decided to join and now we're here. <laughs> I don't think I expected just how diverse the cast was going to be um, in, in their acts and just as people. Uh, there's people from all over the world in our show, which has been really cool. I think it's something like 19 different countries that are represented and it's like crazy because you just, there are so many accents and like languages being spoken at any time and I'm so not used to that being from the city where I'm from and like it just feels like growing up and leaving and like experiencing the world but you just have all of them in your cast with you and it's awesome. The diversity of our cast is one of the best parts and one of the things that surprised me the most. I think what I didn't expect was like the mutual appreciation and support is so universal like we just have such a group, good group of people and everyone's so supportive and excited by each other that it makes for a really good workplace energy. So I would say Karina is mirroring our emotions today. <laughs> because that can't possibly be comfortable, but it's where we're at. <laughs> Our act is a lot of fun. It has a ton of personality. I think it really lets Joe and I show a little bit of ourselves in the piece. So I love just how much attitude it has. <laughs> you feel like you're in like a music video a little bit. There's flashing camera noises and the lights coordinate. And so you're just like, oh, I'm looking at a camera. I'm looking at a camera like the whole time for seven minutes. Honestly, it feels a lot like it's where I feel very most at home. Literally, I, I never thought that ice dancing would bring me here. Um, I would just say if you love something and that, like you're excited to get out of bed every day and do it, get like as good at it as you can. Whatever you want to do, try to put a little bit of your personality into it. Nothing is ever really off limits. You don't have to be a gymnast to work here and I think if you have a talent and it shines and it's a source of personal joy for you, there's a place for you here. Three words. I would have to say one is glamorous, two unexpected, and three amazing. <laughs> it really is amazing. I really wish I could see it as an audience member because it's so cool. <laughs> it's like a fabulous rock show. It's pretty badass. <laughs> it's pretty badass. <laughs>My name is Arpenik. Um, I was born in a beautiful country of Armenia from a capital, Yerevan. I am a cellist and a vocalist for Axel. I am the cellist that Axel painted in his image of how he saw the cellist. And I must say, I really truly believe that he really painted me when he did so because of the character. You'll see what it looks like. We have become a family. We're practically all married to each other without the marriage, basically. So our days is morning, breakfast um, or coffee. Good morning. And then practice together, take a break together, <laughs> and then eat lunch together. And then after you're done eating lunch together, you know, everybody goes, does their workout, blah, blah, blah. And then we in the evening again together because we eat together in the evening most of the time. Well, we have Arpanic like cooking some incredible chicken over here. We'll, we'll see, see you when the food is ready. And sometimes, if it's a weekend, I will take my, um, you know, I will take stroll somewhere, I will go discover the city. Every Sunday, it's a habit now. I make it to be possible to go out. So I am in the woods, as you can see around me. It is just green, green, green. For me as a cellist, I definitely have to warm my fingers up. So before we start the rehearsals, usually I will play David Popper. Like I will play very classically, very challenging studies. Everybody knows, I'm like, ah, our panic is starting again. You know, it's like, da -da 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 -da, you know. For my playing, obviously, just something to warm my fingers up. And for the vocals, and all of that, you know, you know the thrill. <laughs> It's challenging that I want to now skate on the top of that. 
I'm learning, I'm taking lessons and it's, it's getting better and better and better. But you know how they say you have to work so hard before you can actually feel comfortable doing something that you're just learning. I was born to a family of an actress. I grew up in the theater backstage. I am a theater child. Tell me when will you be mine? I don't know. Tell me Gwanda, Gwanda, Gwanda. I don't know when. Everything that I knew my whole life was related to art, to stage. So it, it is the very natural form of habitat for me to be in around the actors or performers of such nature. And I also grew up uh, doing a little bit of a drama education myself as well. But then I have always been a musician from a very young age, so. I've always known that I would be a musician. I wanted to be many other things as well because I believed that I could. But every single path always led me back to music. I must say that I'm, a, I'm one of those people that tried many different things while I also grew up playing music professionally. But then anything I did I stopped and I came back to music and then when I got my professional uh, graduate and master's degree in music, that's how I st stuck to music and I knew that's it, this is it. My favorite part is that I get to play and sing together on, at the same time, which is something that I just love to do. We have a very, very good connection, all of us together. I must say that we have a very good band leader and constantly it is, um, if we are not laughing, smiling, playing a passage, we're communicating about something. I would say that we are just having lots of fun when we are doing this and you can come in, if you come in during the rehearsal, you will see, you know, there's a passage, somebody's making a really funky face and the other one is laughing and, it's an interaction. Axel, in three words, it would have been mysterious, it would have been fascinating, and it would have been very intimate.